here the uh, the installer is cleaning the pipe uh, of the machine as you can see so he has put the uh, the level of water with the higher pressure and he's cleaning the pipe that's in extremely important to do before starting with the with the application as you can see the the level of the fluximeter of the water is high so the uh, the uh, the water will run through the pipe to remove the remaining product uh, which can be uh, left inside. This is an operation which is mandatory uh, before installing any material, but especially diatonite, uh, also because diatonite, as it has cork grains of uh, like uh, three millimeters, uh, you, uh, the, it, it's mandatory that the, the pipe is completely clean. We will use uh, a nozzle of uh, 14 to uh, 16. So that's the, uh, the, the nozzle of, um, of the machine to spray diatonite plasters. Uh, at the start, you have to uh, use uh, uh, 400 liters per hour uh, just to clean the pipe in order to have it ready for the application of diatonite. Then you have to lower the level of the, of the water until uh, uh, 300 liters per hour. And according to the weather condition, you can uh, uh, adjust it and take it down to uh, 250 liters per hour. So that's the, uh, the minimum that we, we recommend uh, for, the, for the application of diatonite. Diatonite Thermactive and Diatonite Evolution, they have uh, uh, almost the same uh, uh, water uh, values. Uh, if you apply Diatonite Deomix Plus and uh, Diatonite Acoustics Plus, they have, uh, um, they, they can uh, um, take uh, higher values of water, like uh, 280, uh, to 300 uh, so that's the normal uh, uh, value for those materials because those materials have uh, higher densities than uh, diatonite thermactive and diatonite evolution because diatonite thermactive and diatonite evolution are the uh, lightest uh, plasters that we that we have the installer has already thrown the material inside the machine as you can see this is the granulometry of the plaster of the diatonite. All these uh, parts, all these uh, uh, grains are cork. So this is pure cork uh, inside of the material. And the other powder is the, the mixing of uh, lime, um, pumice stone, uh, cellulose fibers as well, because this material is reinforced with microcellulose fibers and uh, and uh, and the other components like diatomic powders and uh, uh, expanding silicium powder which is a specific raw material we use in diatonite thermactive so this is the installation of the nozzle this nozzle is 14 the, the size is is 14 uh, he is starting with a higher pressure in order to clean the pipe. As you can see, the material is very liquid. Obviously, the material has to be a little bit less uh, liquid than this. And this was because the installer started with, uh, uh, with a higher level of water to clean uh, the, the pipe and now he will uh, uh, turn the level of water lower than the 400 liters per hour and, um, and to take it uh, below 300.
he's starting now to wet the wall a little bit. So this procedure is uh, mandatory in the summer, uh, but also, you know, in the winter, you have to, uh, to wet it a little bit. It's important, this uh, operation of uh, uh, wetting the, the, the substrate, it is important because uh, if you do not uh, wet the, the substrate of stone and bricks, the, uh, the substrate will absorb a lot uh, of the water of the plaster, of the mixing. So it will uh, have some uh, cracks, it will have some cracks uh, during the drying time. And this procedure applies uh, all the times that you are applying the material directly onto the substrate. As you can see, the consistency is different because they have lowered the water. So the level is, of water is included between 300 liters per hour and 250 liters per hour. So it's important to start from the bottom side of the wall up to the, uh, to the top of the wall. Because of the weather condition, uh, there is uh, a, lo a lot of humidity and there is, uh, uh, there is high level of humidity and water. We are reducing the level of water of the fluximeter of the pump. When the installer started in the bottom part of the wall, the material was a little bit more liquid. So you can see, you can see, you can see the problems that may happen if the material is too liquid and if you apply too much water, if you use too much water. So the material falls down like this. This has to be avoided, especially uh, when uh, there is a high level of humidity and, uh, and maybe the weather, the, the temperature of the weather is very low. So you, in this case, you have to, uh, play uh, with, uh, with the level of water and you have to adjust the level of water and to take it down. Here, as you can see, the, the material is, uh, uh, is matte, so it's not shining. Uh, and it's because uh, the, the level of water has been taken down to uh, 250 liters per hour. And in this case, the material doesn't fall down. So he has charged probably more than three centimeters, I think, in some, in some parts, as you can see. And there is no even a drop of material falling down. It's perfectly stable onto the wall. When you apply the first coat of the material, and you uh, on the following day you have to do the second coat you have to leave the material like this you don't have to to apply uh, to put the straight edge bend okay so you have to leave the material like this for one day at least on the following day you can apply another coat and then you can level the second coat after the, if it's the final coat obviously we do not recommend to level between coats, uh, because you may lose some of the porosity of the material. Those cavities, those porosities, uh, like, like these ones, are extremely important for the thermal properties of the material, and they are extremely important for the dehumidification properties of the material, for the breathability of the plaster. I imagine this is the last coat now, imagine this is the last coat, he is showing the movements you have to do with a straight, straight edge bend to, uh, to show, to flat the material. Like this. This is the, the way you have to do. Like this. 
The straight edge band has to be like this. This is the straight edge band that we recommend. And the straight edge band has to be put at 90 degrees with the level of the, uh, of the material. Uh, this is important to not uh, uh, close too much the porosities of the product. Obviously, you can uh, uh, flat it a little bit more uh, with, uh, with a trowel. It is possible. Uh, the only recommendation that we give is to not press too much the material because otherwise you you can lose its uh, uh, its properties and its porosity uh, the installer is uh, is cleaning the the pipe uh, because that is important to clean the pipe uh, after the application of the atonite uh, otherwise the cork grains will be uh, blocked into the pipe this is how porous the material looks. It's not like a traditional plaster. It's not like a, a traditional lime plaster because of cork. So even if it has lime, it is extremely uh, lighter and extremely more porous than, uh, than a normal plaster. Just a quick word about the Yatonite uh, finish. If the finish is like this, uh, it is too much smooth so it's too much compressed and it's not very good to have this type of finish like this which as you can see keeps some of the porosities uh, it's what should be should be done 